Hello, welcome back. I'm Evan Brand, board certified holistic nutritionist and certified functional medicine practitioner. Let's talk about cell phones, Wi Fi, electromagnetic frequencies, electromagnetic radiation, radio frequencies, the age of electricity. Now, this video is not designed to go through the entire 40 to 60 years of research on this topic in six minutes. The goal is to give you a brief overview of some of the evidence that's out there, some of the research, peer-reviewed research, and also inspire you to do further reading, investigation, and further listening for yourself. So there's some books and resources I'm going to give you at the end of this video, and then also I'll link you to several podcast episodes that I've done with EMR and EMF experts on my show where we discuss this in great detail, what it is and how to mitigate it, hours of free content. So first, I mean, we have to really compare the age of electricity to the CFCs in the environment, the aerosols that were used throughout the 1950s, 60s, until the 1970s, when we realized that these aerosol carbon molecules that we were spraying from our air fresheners and our air conditioners, if you had an old car, you probably remember the R12, the Freon that it was called, it gave you really, really cold air conditioning, but you were polluting the environment with the CFCs that were involved with that. So now they've banned the government and all the agencies that stepped up to reduce and ban CFCs that cause the most harm to the environment. They've banned that and now we've switched over to R134A. And then we realized, uh-oh, now we've created a massive hole in the ozone layer of our planet that is required to protect us and ensure that life can be sustained on this planet. Then regulations became important. So this is when we created the Montreal Protocol. And that's when all the countries around the world that are creating and contributing to the depletion of the ozone layer said, wow, we cannot do this anymore. This is not good. So now if you look at the charts online of the CFCs, you see that we're really starting to phase these out. However, third world countries and developing countries are still using these CFCs and contributing to the depletion of the ozone layer. The next thing you have to understand is that all electromagnetic frequencies and electromagnetic radiation affects all life. And there's research that shows this. And it's DNA damage that we're talking about. So there was a review of 16 different studies that had various sorts of data about electromagnetic radiation and cell phone use. And it found that there was a 240% increase in the risk of a head tumor on the side of the head that the cell phone was most frequently used on. Now, if you just saw my video that I posted yesterday about the new Apple iPhone, LeBron James ended up with a salivary gland tumor. Now, I believe they said it was benign. I don't believe they said it was cancerous, but it was still a tumor that developed in that salivary gland that is very, 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 very close. Actually, it's almost the exact spot, if you have a big smartphone, where that phone would be touching you. I've completely stopped using a cell phone on my head. I use speakerphone. I use a headset that has air tubes connected to it. This is the action part of this. I'm not saying or suggesting we have to go to the dark ages and we have to go back to candlelight and we have to go back to a telegraph, you know, saying SOS to our friends. That's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that we have to implement strategies to mitigate the effects of the modern environment. We just have to hack it. That's where you get the term biohacker. That's what we have to do. We have to mitigate it. We're not going to be able to go backwards. It's too late. Think about the tobacco industry, for example, which is what Martin Blank uses as the example in his book, which I'll show you, called Overpowered. He says, think about the tobacco industry. We realized after many, many years of what people were saying, tobacco is carcinogenic, it causes cancer, and you had all of these lobbyists. You can look at this footage online. You can look at all of these lobbyists that were in the tobacco industry claiming cigarettes are safe matter of uh, whether or not nicotine is addictive. Let me ask you first, and I'd like to just go down the row, uh, whether each of you believes uh, that nicotine is not addictive. I heard virtually all of you touch on it, and just yes or no. Do you believe nicotine is not addictive? I believe nicotine is not addictive, yes. Mr. Johnston. Uh, Congressman, cigarettes and nicotine clearly do not meet the classic definitions of addiction there is no right. intoxication. We'll, we'll take that as a no and the follow a busy doctor as he makes his daily round of calls 
you'd find yourself having a mighty busy time keeping up with him. Time out for many men of medicine usually means just long enough to enjoy a cigarette. And because they know what a pleasure it is to smoke a mild, good-tasting cigarette, they're particular about the brand they choose. In a repeated national survey, doctors in all branches of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette when they knew they were lying through their teeth about the research. Eventually the research becomes overwhelming and they had to start putting warning labels saying that cigarettes cause cancer. Now, where the age of electricity differs from tobacco industry is our, the fabric of our entire civilization is built upon electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation. So I'm not just talking about cell phones. I mean, imagine if we just, all cell phones tomorrow cease to exist. There's a lot of money involved, so that would never happen for economical reasons, but also you think about the power lines that distribute power to big cities. You think about hydroelectric dams and pumps and various things that are used to run the basic necessities of human life, including your water sources, your electricity, turning on a light switch, turning on a stove so that you can cook. Back to our board here. So there's another Israeli study that took a pretty interesting amount of data on cell phone use and found that if you're using a cell phone 22 hours a month, you were 50% more likely to develop salivary gland cancers. So then you got here living within 400 meters of a cell tower for 10 years, you have a three times rate of cancer. Now, if you listen to my podcast, you'll know back when I lived in Austin, Texas, we, my wife and I, we lived in an apartment building on the third floor and I looked face to face with a cell phone tower every night before I tried to go to bed. It was probably two to 300 yards away, definitely within that 400 meter range. I had the worst sleep of my life. I was extremely restless. I had almost incessant headaches when I was at that location. I felt like I never went into a deep stage of sleep. I just sort of tossed and turned all night. I woke up feeling exhausted and I was in my early 20s. I even ran my adrenal hormones and found that I had deep, deep deficiencies or insufficiencies of cortisol. My cortisol rhythm, or what would indicate adrenal dysfunction, was extremely evident. Now, obviously there were other factors. I moved to a state where I'd never been before. I was a thousand miles away from friends and family, et cetera, et cetera. However, I'm led to believe that the cell phone tower, which I could feel on my nervous system, I had heart palpitations, I had anxiety that I never had before, I believe I even had a panic attack. I know my wife had a pa one panic attack without a doubt. So obviously there's a combination of factors, right? I can't say X caused Y for sure, but it was highly evident that when I got away from that environment, even if we just went out to a restaurant, the anxiety and that, ah, that shaky vibrational feeling that I had in my nervous system, it disappeared. And I'm not an anxious person by nature, so it was very bizarre. So the World Health Organization, or WHO, they designate EMF as a possible cause of cancer. So when you have an organization as large as the World Health Organization saying it's a possible cause of cancer, don't you think that's a pretty bold or pretty far-reaching statement for them to even admit that part, that it's possible that this is an issue? Lastly here, last point, is colony collapse disorder. You've probably seen, if you haven't, you need to watch the documentary More Than Honey. It's about bees and it's about colony collapse disorder. What's happening is almond farmers and other farmers in California are dependent upon semi-trucks loaded full of bees that have to transport bees seasonally up to Washington for the apples, down to California for the almonds, and they're literally like a moving circus of bees used to pollinate the trees because the bee population is so low and is so highly affected with this CCD where you're getting 20 to 50% in some cases of the bees that are dying. So here you are, you have this semi-truck, these men that are lugging around these bees and then all of a sudden, like a snap of a finger, you have hundreds if not thousands of hives that just die. Now, there is a study where just a single cell phone was used near bees and that was enough to cause colony collapse disorder and the entire colony died. Also, 
bird navigation, we've seen lots of increases. If you look at some of the data in cities, we're seeing a huge increase in birds hitting buildings, getting hit by power lines, and dying by our modern influences. Obviously, these are man-made objects, so that's one new obstacle for them, but birds should be able to have the navigational ability, and they're unable to. They're starting to get confused. There's different flight patterns that are being studied that are getting disrupted by the birds, likely due to the fact that birds are magnetic compass type creatures where they're looking for that signal so that they can follow the poles and the magnetic fields that naturally exist on this earth. However, when you're adding in man-made magnetic fields, you're disrupting their own compass, if you will. These are just a couple of facts, a couple statistics, a couple different studies, but what I encourage you to do, get this book, this is one of the most important books that you can ever read in your life. This is just one of many that we can discuss. Martin Blank's Overpowered, What Science Tells Us About the Dangers of Cell Phones and Other Wi-Fi Age Devices. Hundreds of peer-reviewed studies, decades of research in there. There's also The Body Electric by Robert Becker. There's a few other books. I'm going to list those below. I won't keep your... I won't waste your time here with, with the naming of them. I'll put them all below. Check them out and read the research for yourself. I'm just the messenger boy here, but I've felt firsthand the effects of living close to cell phone towers, living in very dense urban areas where there was 30, 40 Wi-Fi signals that were around me. So what my wife and I have done in our own home, now that we've moved, is we have our Wi-Fi router and modem on a power strip. So in the evening or when we're not in use of it, we turn it off. Also, I've logged on to my router settings, look up the brand that you have, and then check your power settings. Default is set to 100, meaning your Wi-Fi router is emitting a lot of power where you could go to the neighbors down the block and you could still pick up your Wi-Fi. That's completely unnecessary. So what I've done is I've changed my Wi-Fi power setting to 1, meaning if I go right outside my front door, I cannot pick up my Wi-Fi signal. If I go back into the master bedroom, I'm unable to pick up the Wi-Fi signal hardly at all at that point. So that's just something we've implemented because I still love these devices. I love technology just as much as you do, but we have to mitigate it. Also grounding mats can be helpful. So you can use a grounding mat while you're working or you can sleep on a grounding mat. Obviously getting in the dirt, working in, if you have an organic garden, for example, you're working in the soil, grounding yourself that way, tuning into the Schumann residence, which is the natural frequency of the earth that is put off and can be measured immersing yourself in nature, staying hydrated is very important. So I strive for half my body weight in ounces of water per day and that's what I recommend for all my clients. So there's a few strategies. I will chat more with you about this in a future video, but in the meantime, check out the podcast and the hours of other free content that I've done on smart meters with some of the experts on this topic. This is Evan Brand signing out. If you are struggling with this and you need to get help, you need to get advice on what to do, just click on screen and I'll chat with you at no charge. Take care. Bye-bye.